Yeah, so today, man, is going to be exciting. Today, man, we going to get into some scriptures that you never, ever read. We're going to blow the dust off the book of Exodus. Now, in the book of Exodus, we have in chapter 7, verse 1, And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. Now, we all talk about monotheism, but what's up with this right here? Here we have God telling Moses he made him a God to Pharaoh. Now, I'm going to go a little deeper. Let's go over to chapter 4. Verse 14, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And he said, is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well. And also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. And when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. And thou shalt speak unto him. And put words in his mouth. And I will be with thy mouth. And with his mouth. And will teach you what ye shall do. And he shall be thy spokesman unto the people. And he shall be even he shall be to thee instead of a mouth. And thou shalt be to him instead of a God. Simply put, God only has one prophet. And he's giving you right here the model. He's giving you right here the diagram. God only has one prophet. And this is seen in the life of Moses. Aaron was his spokesman. And Moses was the God. Moses was a God, not only to Pharaoh, but to also Aaron. Why do we have things like this in a religion we call monotheism? Now, who can answer that? Nobody can answer that. Islam can't answer that. The Christians definitely can't answer that. And they don't mind because they believe in the Trinity. They believe in the three and one. But what is going on? Why is God allowing one man to be a God when he is God? Because the whole Old Testament was nothing but the Father. The New Testament that y'all proclaim to be the New Testament, all the scriptures of the Gospels where it talks about the Father is the God of the entire Old Testament. There was only one God in the Old Testament, and he was the Father. God entrusted the Father with the religion of Judaism. He trusted him with the religion we call Islam. This is the reason why God loves doing Big, major things with just one person. Why? Because God is a God and he puts a man over a religion as God. That's what he did. So every time you're reading through the Gospels and Jesus is saying, my father, my father, my father. If you pay attention to everything Jesus said, it's just as if a man was teaching through the prophet Isa. It wasn't God. It was his father. And that's where the Christians and the Muslims have failed to realize. God only has one spokesman. He told Moses, you are going to be their God and Aaron is going to be your prophet. Because God is God. And many of us, all of you, do not deal with him directly. No, you don't. God sent the father down here. So the man who was meeting up with Moses, the angel in the burning bush, the angel whom Allah put his name in was the God of the entire Old Testament. You never dealt with God. 
God has spokesmen. God has prophets. And he has one chief prophet whom he has put in charge over all the real religions. And Jesus let that be known. Let's go to Matthew chapter 21 and let's go to 42. Yeah. Jesus seen this. You see, the Pharisees, the Jews, all was confused. The way Jesus taught, the way he spoke, they all was confused. They was like, this dude is literally making God his father. But no, it was the father speaking through the prophet Isa. And the prophet Isa recognized that there was one chief prophet in the heavens who was called the father. And this man was not God. He simply was made a God. He simply was an ultimate Moses. Now, right here in verse 42, it reads, Jesus saith unto them, Did you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? The same is become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Now, pay attention to what he just said. He literally said the same is become the head of the corner. In other words, this prophet is chief. This prophet who is constantly, constantly being rejected has been promoted to being the chief prophet of all prophets. This prophet is none other than al -Mahdi. This is the father whom Jesus was praying to. You see, in the religion of Judaism, they had a high priest. And the high priest was the only one who can go into the holies of holies and have direct contact with the most high. Nobody else could. And that's how God did the religions. He put one man in charge of all of these religions so that when someone proclaims to be God and when someone says, hey, God has a son, that ultimate copy, that ultimate father, that al Mahdi would come down at the last day to set the record straight. Allah has charged me to clean up this earth. When I was a child, I remember my mama telling me, when you see something on the floor, pick it up. Now, in my adult life, I'm a man that does not litter. I will walk and throw something away. I don't care if it's a little piece of plastic. I am not going to put that in my car. If I am in the car and I see trash, I'm just by instinct. I just throw it away. Okay, if I find stuff, I throw it away. When I'm at work. I see bears um, have come in the other night, tipped over trash cans. When I walk into work, I'm picking those trash cans up. From the beginning, Allah has already put it in my spirit that I was the clean up man and that I am the man that is chosen to clean up this house. Now, al Mahdi is the man who has been charged to clean up the earth. Now, if you're a Christian, I recognize that these other books are foreign to you. But I would encourage you to get a copy of the Hadiths online. Okay, they're free. You can download a PDF. Read through it. Read about a man named al Mahdi, And I'm going to read something from this Hadith. Okay, now... Al Mahdi in Islamic eschatology is a messianic deliverer who will fill the earth with justice and equity and he will restore true religion and usher in a short golden age lasting seven, eight, or nine years before the end of the world. So, Brothers and sisters that are in the church, that are in the camps, there's a missing character 
that's in your Bible that you don't have a name for. Jesus said this man is the chief prophet. Okay, I'm paraphrasing. He said that this stone which the builders rejected, this same stone has become chief. Now, let me give you a little history about that black cobblestone that you've been talking crazy about. Now, this black cobblestone, the stone that's encircled in the silver case um, that the Muslims kiss. Now, that stone originally was white and it came down here from heaven. Okay, and this stone absorbed the people's sins, particularly the sons of Adam. And that is why it is black. Now, that same stone is on a corner of the Kaaba because this is a picture of Al Mahdi. Al Mahdi is the Abba. Inside of Kaaba, you can spell Abba. Inside of Mahdi is Dad. Daddy, okay, that black stone you kiss is a picture of Al Mahdi. Now, Al Mahdi came from heaven. He was in heaven the whole time. He was Allah's spokesman, just like Moses had a mouth whose name was Aaron. It's the same thing with Al Mahdi. God had only one prophet in the throne room. And it was Al Mahdi. That's why when we hear the expression of the God of Elijah or the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac, why is it called the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Ain't he everybody God? Why isn't he called everybody's God? He's not everybody's God. Allah is only the God of Al Mahdi. Okay? All the other prophets was trying to tell you this. That's why they had expressions like the God of Elijah, the God of Abraham, the God of Ishmael. OK, you was going through another person's God and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is worthy to be praised. I associate no partner with him. There's no deity worthy of worship but him. He's the one who's taught me this. No man has taught me this. You can't Google, goggle this. This is all direct revelation from Allah. He took me to the scriptures right there in the book of Exodus. You can see that a God who doesn't have a partner, he doesn't have no partners, yet he made Moses a God to the people. Why? Because Moses was a picture of the ultimate Moses, the ultimate Al Mahdi. Okay, I love calling him Mohammed because he is the real Mohammed. But when I do, people get confused with the Arabian Mohammed. There's only one prophet that was in heaven. Only one. Only one prophet. So when Jesus, every time he would teach, he would glorify this father. Even he would pray to this father because I told you, you can't just pray directly to God. That prayer has to go to a high priest. And Al Mahdi was the ultimate high priest. And Jesus recognized that. Okay. Jesus was a slave of Allah. He was a servant of servants. So he had to go through one man's God to get to God. And that's how God does it. He has angels. He has messengers. He has prophets. He has ambassadors. You never are going to go directly through him. Never. Never. That's why Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He wasn't talking. It was Al Mahdi speaking through the prophet Isa, and the prophet Isa recognized it. It was Al Mahdi speaking through the prophet Isa, because Al Mahdi is the door to God because God has put the whole earth under this man's charge. That goes for forgiveness. Okay. That goes for judgment. He's entrusted this whole earth to Al Mahdi. You see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is worthy to be praised. He is Lord of the worlds, 
but he entrusted the earth to Almaty. And this is why, let's go there in Deuteronomy 18 and 18, so we can get a closer look at the responsibility of the father prophet. Let's get that. Deuteronomy 18 and 18. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee. Now this thee is Moses. And will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Now, this is not Moses. This is not Jesus. This is not Mohammed. This is a picture of a prophet who would come at the last nine years of the world coming to an end. This man is going to be the prophet who is ultimately in control of the whole earth. The earth is his. He's an heir. Everything belongs to him. Now, Al Maddy, okay, this man is without sin. He has no sin. That's why Jesus said, who can accuse me of sin? How can you accuse a man who wrote all the rules? Okay, let's say the earth is yours. You can do whatever you want in it. There's no law. Because you are the law man. My name, Lamonti, literally, if you look it up, it literally means two things. It means law man. And it also means Lamonti. And we'll get to Lamonti in a minute. So that's why Jesus would say, who can accuse me of sins? That's why Jesus was forgiving people's sins. Why? Because it wasn't Jesus. It was Al Maddie. It was his daddy. Forgiving the people who touched the prophet Isa in sincerity. Allah tells us that on the day of judgment, he will bring forth the stone, that black rock, that Lamonti. It will have two eyes and a tongue. And it will testify to all of those who have touched him in sincerity. God has put all judgment in the hands of Al Maddy. So when Jesus was saying all judgment has been placed in the hand of the Son, he was going into Al Maddy. Why? Because Al Maddy is the Son, S U N. He's the brightest prophet. And he is the one who is ultimately going to judge this world. Al Maddy came through the generations. So he is not only a father. He is a son. He's not only a root, but he is a offspring. Now, going back to that Lamonti, Allah tells us that if you keep saying that Allah has a son, that at that saying, the very heavens would quake and that the mountains would fall and the earth would split. Now, the mountains is going into Lamonti. My dad's name is Monty. My name is Lamonti. It means the mountains. So the mountains is going to come down. Why? Because you keep saying Allah has a son and he's going to prove it to you that Allah doesn't have a son. That's al Mahdi's son. The prophet Isa is my son. Now, only God showed me that. Now, how many people are walking around saying that Jesus is their son? Now, there's a lot of fools that may think they're God, but I'm telling you, I'm not God. I'm not him. OK, I am simply the father, but the prophet Isa is my son. OK, now you're not going to find many people talking like that because many people don't have that revelation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he could have left me. He could have forgot all about me because there's not one of you who can teach me what I'm learning right now from him. He could have just left me forgotten. But no, he woke me up and showed me who this world belongs to. So just imagine 
how I feel every day, okay, working, being a servant to man, okay, it's depressing, but there's coming a day that Allah will bring me to the forefront and you will not tell me what to do no more. So we got that in Deuteronomy 18 and 18. He says, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren. Now, many times we have confused this with Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. He was a servant. And Jesus said, the servant does not abide in the house forever, but the son abides in the house forever forever. This was not talking about the Arabian Mohammed. This was talking about the black Mohammed. This was talking about al Mahdi. He said, I will raise up for you a prophet from among your brethren. This man will be an Israelite. Okay. Now, one of the most strongest things about the nation of Ishmael is we know their identity. We know that they all came from Ishmael. So there is no trying to confuse this scripture with Muhammad. And we all have done that, but we were right, okay, because it is going to the real Muhammad. This is a picture of the real Muhammad who is of Israel, okay? So the mountains was going to fall down, and I'm here. I'm here for judgment. I have to die along with the prophet Isa. And this is all in the law. Let's get that. Let's go to Exodus chapter 20. And let's go to verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath. Or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So what's going on is God is telling you, look. If you try to make somebody God, that father prophet is going to have to come down here along with that person you tried to make God and they both going to die. Okay, that was the judgment. The judgment was coming back to the chief prophet. Okay, so now when you look at all of these stories about a lamb suffering, this is all going to al Mahdi. He is the one who was in heaven, minding his own business. He was the heir. And just because you people have associated Jesus with God and made him God's son, now the law comes in effect. And the law is, okay, the father and the son both have to die. And it ain't supposed to be this way. That's why if you go to Deuteronomy 24, 16, it tells you the fathers shall not be put to death for the children. Neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sins. That's how it's supposed to be. That's how it's supposed to be. And that's how it will be in the new covenant. We're not in the new covenant yet, because if we go to Jeremiah 31 and we go to verse 29 it reads in those days they shall say no more the fathers have eaten a sour grape and the children's teeth are set on edge but everyone shall die for his own iniquity every man that eat of the sour grape his teeth shall be set on edge Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant, not with Ishmael. I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers. And the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord. 
But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts, and they will be my people. I will be their God. They shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest. Why? Because he's going to come down here. Al Maddie's going to come down here. He's going to be a human being. Okay? The word is going to become flesh. That's exactly what that's all going into. And the man who is talking right here is Al Maddie. It was Al Maddie. He was made the God of the Bible. He was made the God of the whole earth. Okay? Not Allah. Allah is the Lord of, of the worlds. He entrusted one man with the religion we call Islam, with the religion we call Judaism today. He entrusted one man with all of this. And the prophet Isa seen him. The prophet Isa knew who his father was. And the Quran is correct. Allah has no sons. It is a monstrosity to say such a thing. Okay, this man, al Mahdi, was the ultimate high priest. Every time you prayed, it didn't go to Allah. No, it went to al Mahdi. That's where it went. That's why Jesus said, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. He knew that al Mahdi was going to have to come down to earth one day. And set up his own kingdom. Okay. From that kingdom. The tribes of Israel. Will be reborn. Okay. We ain't going around with a chart. Trying to figure out who is Israel. No. All of the tribes of Israel. Will be reborn again. From one man's loins. And that is the truth. Let's get that. Let's go to. Isaiah. 49 and 6. We all should know this one. We should know this one by heart. And I've been looking at it earlier and earlier. And I precept it with Genesis 49. And we'll go there next. This is going to be Isaiah 49 and 6. And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to Raise up the tribes of Jacob. This is going into one man with the dye. Okay, with the ink. Okay, with the blood. To raise up the tribes of Israel from his loins. That's exactly what he said in Deuteronomy 18. The Lord will raise up a prophet from among you. That means going into birth. And the tribes of Israel are going to be born. They're going to be born. That's why he said they're going to he's going to raise up the tribes of Jacob and do and do what? And restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. So this is going into Al Mahdi coming down here, the word becoming flesh. Taking on a human body. And God's going to use this one man, Dai, Dai Quant, from Indiana, in Dai, Dai, Anna. Okay, Al Matty, he's going to use this one man with the Dai to push out the tribes of Israel. Okay, and then not only that, he's going to make this man a Gentile messenger. He's going to make him what? A ruler of the Arabs. This one man is going to do all of this. And it's not contradicting what the prophet Muhammad said. The prophet Muhammad said on his last speech, he said that he was the only messenger that was sent to another nation or the other nations besides his own. That wasn't him talking. That was me. That was al Mahdi speaking through him. Like I keep telling you, every prophet that ever prophesied correctly, it was one prophet speaking through them. All the prophets was going by my God. They were going through my God. That's why Islam is named after me, Is Islamantes. 
That was my religion. Islam is Lamontes. You go to Quran. What does it have? My name in her Quan. I'm the rich homie Quan, metaphorically. Okay. Look at everything. Muslim. Muslim. You you basically is saying you is of Monty and you're saying that you're of Lamonti. You're a Muslim. All of that Islam, that's that was my religion. That's how I worshiped Allah. And that's how I worship Allah right now. That was my religion. It was never, ever given to the prophet Muhammad. He was a servant. And the servant doesn't abide in the house forever. Okay? But the son, the heir, he abides in the house forever. That's my religion. Okay, that's why the prophet Muhammad told you. He said, hey, when al Mahdi comes, he is going to be the ruler of you all, you Arabs. He told you because it wasn't his. That's why he didn't put his face on it. Actually, in the Quran, the voice of the Quran was al Mahdi, And I told him, you are not a father. You're not a supervisor. None of these things. Why? Because I am. That's my book. And my name is on the cover of it, okay? I am the ultimate Mohammed. And it's not to glorify myself, okay? I'm not glorifying myself by telling the truth. When my son came eons ago and was saying, I am the bread of heaven, I'm the bread of life, I am the resurrection and the life, he wasn't saying those words on his own. That was al Mahdi speaking through him. And then he goes on to tell you that the words that he speak is not his words. Now, let's get that. This is going to be John 14, 24. Many people have no idea that every time Jesus spoke, it wasn't his words. So let's read that. John chapter 14 and 24. He that loveth me not, keep not my sayings. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the fathers which sent me. So Jesus is saying, look, these words belong to my father. It belongs to my father. They're, these words are not my words. These words belong to my father. But people have idolized my son so much that when I come down here and when I say, I am who I am. When I say I'm the rich homie Quan, when I say I'm the Cassius Clay, when I say I am the Malcolm X, when I say all of these statements, then it's like I sound crazy. But it was really my voice speaking through the prophet Isa from the beginning. OK, now going back to where we was at, because we have to focus on what God told Moses, he told Moses, look, man, you are their God. You are their God. Now, that's deep. Exodus 7 and 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, see, I have made you a God to Pharaoh. And Aaron, your brother, shall be your prophet. Because in the ultimate heavenlies, God was the only one who was God, and it was only one messenger who was speaking through all these messengers. God had nothing to do with the religion. He literally put one man in charge of it. Okay? He put one man in charge of these religions. One man. Just one man. Every prophet that ever prophesied. It was al Mahdi speaking. Now, let's get the other one. This is going to be Exodus 4.14. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. But why, why was he mad? Because God only wanted to use Moses. He did not want to use nobody else. He did not want to use no. See, God is secret. God ain't got that much company. He don't deal with everybody. No, he wanted to keep it a select few. So his anger was kindled at Moses because Aaron came in the picture. He knew all of the drama that was going to come with Aaron being in the picture. But in his anger, he said, is not Aaron the Levite your brother? I know that he can speak well. And also, behold, he come forth to meet thee. And when he see thee, he will be glad in his heart. 
and thou shalt speak unto him and put words in his mouth, and I will be with thy mouth and with his mouth and will teach you what you shall do. So here you have a picture of Allah speaking through al Mahdi, and then al Mahdi speaking to the prophet Isa, the prophet Muhammad, the prophet Jeremiah, the prophet Adam, all these prophets. That's why when Paul talks about one having preeminence, when he talks about the Christ of Jesus, that this one was in the beginning and he made all things and all these different things. They knew it was one person who was called the father who has always been. And they knew that this person was going to come to earth one day. This man was in the beginning with God making everything. He helped make all of you. This al Mahdi did. And see, what Paul did was he was deceived by Satan. And Satan made him think he was the father. That's why in 1 Corinthians 4.15, he says he was the father. This is why he called his church saints. He thought he was al Mahdi. John the Baptist said he wasn't. When they asked him, they said, are you Christ? He said, I am not. They said, are you Elijah? He said, I am not. And then they said, are you that prophet? And he said, no, sternly. But Paul took it upon himself to be the father. That's why he called the people in his church sons. He called Titus, Onesimus, Timothy, Philmon, sons. He thought he was al -Mati. You know what he got out of the deal? According to the Hadiths, Paul has a prison in hell named after him. It's called Bulas in the Arabic tongue, which is the name Paul. And all you Christians are first in line. You are on your way. You're on your way to meet your real daddy, your daddy, Paul. So when you realize and once you um, once the light of God touches your soul and a lot of you guys have not been illuminated, you guys have no knowledge. A lot of us are still sleep and we all have been sleep okay we all have been sleep and so you don't understand the significance of al Mahdi yet you don't understand that if it wasn't for al Mahdi, the prophet isa would have had a dad by the name of saul just like the old testament king saul who was the so-called father of david that was always trying to kill him the prophet Isa was saved by al Mahdi. okay? And Allah's plan was for us all to just have one messenger. From the beginning, that's what he always wanted. But the people, they kept idolizing one another. They kept idolizing and then they start associating God with man and man with God. And then we got into a mess with Christianity. And then al Mati had to come down here. And I am here to clean up this earth. I got songs about it. I've been singing about cleaning up God's house for such a long time. Since 2017, I've been singing, clean up this house, clean up this house, clean up this house. Had no clue about al Mati. Didn't know anything about the Hadiths at all. Okay, I had barely read the Quran in 2016. Okay, so when I learned I was al Mahdi, it bear witness with my spirit because this is what I've been singing about this whole time. So to do a recap on to do a recap on everything, what we learned today is there's only one God, Allah. He has no partner. And there's only one messenger, only one. That's why at the end, nobody's going to do no more teaching, no more teaching. Why? Because Al Mahdi will be the teacher. Al Mahdi is going to bring the law to a place where it's in everybody's heart and nobody's going to teach nobody no more. OK, we all will be taught by God. That is the ultimate plan. And going back to Aaron and going back to Moses, Aaron was simply a spokesman. But Moses was made a God in a religion that we call monotheism 
because that's how the throne room of heaven is. The throne room of heaven is missing one messenger right now. One messenger is missing. The ultimate messenger is missing. Al Maddy had to come down here. I'm here. Heaven misses me. I am eons and eons away from home. When I went to prison, I had a song. And I was Christian at the time. And it literally went like this. I'm not of this world. I'm not of this land. I'm only flesh and blood, but God got a new plan. I'm only here among you for a very short time. Okay, because when Jesus makes that call, I'll be the first in line. According to the Hadiths, Al Maddie will meet the prophet Isa. Okay, so while y'all playing around, playing games, we only got about nine years. Okay, when it says he's a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers to the third and fourth generation. That's going to be in Exodus chapter 20, verse 5. It says the third and fourth generation, because I believe that's going into 2034. Okay, I'm a hundred percent solid on that because Allah let me know that's when I'm dying. 2034. So get this knowledge out. Get this truth out. OK, the truth that's on this channel, you can't get nowhere. No, I'm not arrogant. Many people say I'm arrogant. Many people have no knowledge. How about you call Elijah arrogant when he taunted the ball worshipers, when he said, maybe your God is sleeping. Cry louder. OK, that's not arrogancy. No. OK, what we're doing is being bold about the truth. Now, do I know everything? No, I don't. No, I don't. OK, Al Maddie has a big nose and a broad forehead because he knows a lot. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Like Rich Homie Kwan. I know. I know. I know. But I only know what Allah shows me. I only know what he shows me. And trust me, there's a lot of things he needs to show me when he shows me. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters. That will be in the real truth. Except your black Maddie. OK, there's going to be bonuses for those who are accepting the Maddie now. OK, but God is going to require it of you. He's going to require it of you. You're going to be held accountable. Jesus said, whatever you say about me will be forgiven. But whatever you say about that Holy Spirit will not be forgiven in this world or in the world to come. This is the ultimate spirit, the ultimate prophet that's been prophesying since the beginning. OK, I have a song and I'm supposed to be letting you go. And I was listening to my lyrics because I have to go back and listen and listen and listen to the music that I've been doing because it's nothing but prophecy. But I had a song where I literally said I stepped in my mother's womb. Been prophesying since I stepped. In my mother's womb. I had to rewind. I said, wow, I said that. Been prophesying since I stepped in my mother's womb. I stepped in there. I remember I stepped in that hospital. I stepped in there. Okay. I remember pieces of the conversation my mom had with the doctor. I stepped into my mother's womb. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the truth.